Hello and welcome back to my channel Craft Time with Casey. I'm Casey and today we will be making the earrings um, that you see before you a different in a different color. These are three of the ones that I've made so far and with the white pair I have made a matching necklace to go with it with a pretty focal pendant um, that kind of ties it all in together and I really love how these look. Uh, the dangle drops are at different lengths, kind of based off the size of the bead. And I just, I think they're really pretty. Um, I like how the silver chain and the silver findings um, kind of stand out and add to it even. And here's the white pair. I just love the way this looks. So today we are going to be making this style of earring in a different color. If you would like to see how I made these earrings, stay tuned. Okay, so here you go. Here are all the pieces um, that I will need to make this pair of earrings. So I will go through them uh, with anyone who is following along. And the first thing is the chain. Now this chain I um, I got at Michael's. I think I got it at Michael's. I might have ordered it on Amazon, um, but this is what it ca it came. And I I've used this in many different things. The chain this size, it's the lengths are uh, two millimeters. It is perfect for different type of uh, dangle jewelry. Um, so I highly recommend this, and I do believe I got it on Amazon if if I remember correctly but this is what it looks like so this took a lot of preparation beforehand um, I actually counted out the different ch uh, links of chain that are needed before this so these small pieces um, have nine links of chain in them nine links of chain in the smallest pieces and you will need six pieces at this length for the smallest pieces in the in the earring and then this middle length piece is exactly 20 links and you'll need four of them two for each of the middle size bead and then the longest piece here uh, this is 28 links of chain and you'll need two one for each pair for the biggest bead in the set so I also have these clear uh, seed beads they are check glass seed beads um, they're 11 0 right here it says 11 0 and this is the crystal color um, and I'm pretty sure I got these at Hobby Lobby. Of course, I could have got them at Michael's as well, um, but I'm pretty sure, I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. And I have four millimeter jump rings down here, um, and then I have six millimeter jump rings, two of them. And of course I have two ear wires, and then two different size bead caps. I have the larger bead cap here, um, and I have four of them. They're going to be used with the largest bead. And then I have smaller bead caps right here, and I have eight of them. I'm going to be using those for the middle size beads. Okay. I also have these ballpoint head pins um, that I will be using to make each one of the pieces. So to make these earrings, I always start with making each piece first involving the beads because once those are made, at the end, it's just a matter of putting it all together. The tools that I will be using, um, I will be using two sets of chain nose pliers, so I can have one in each hand to manipulate things. And I will be using round nose pliers 
uh, to be making my loops. And I will be using my fine point cutters as well. I'm going to be making the smaller, the smallest uh, ones first. And I take one of my head pins and I get two of the 11-0 crystal seed beads. One of the smallest rondelles. And two more. And one thing I didn't say about the beads that I've chosen, um, these are beads that are the exact same bead in different sizes. Um, so I have, let me show it to you this way. I'll set that down. So to make this style of earring, um, you will need three beads that are the same in different sizes to go for the look that um, I have created here. So these are the three different types of, in this case, rondel. It would work with, I mean, any shaped bead uh, as long as you know, you have three different sizes. Um, you could use cubes, you could use rounds. Um, I like the the rondelle, I like the faceted look where it moves and it kind of picks up the light and, um, you know, as it moves. So that's what I've chosen. But it's certainly flexible for different styles of beads. It's just a matter of having the different sizes. So, here we go. We have the two crystals on either side and the smallest rondelle in the middle. So here's how I make my loops. I'm gonna hold it at the top and then I wanna get it close, but leave a little space because you don't wanna crack the glass beads. So at the top, you're going to bend it. So for me, it looks like this. And then you're going to bend it back with your fingers right over the round nose pliers. And you open it up and you see it's got the beginning of a very nice loop. At this point, I get my cutters and I go up into the loop a little bit. Hold on to that end while you're cutting it because it'll go flying. You only need to be hit in the eye one time to realize it doesn't feel good. All right, and then at that point, you just take your round nose pliers into the loop and close it. And there is your first dangle. And so we're going to repeat this several times. So I'm going to do it with the other two small ones in this first earring, and then I will come back. All right, so here is my third one for this first earring. So I've got the three smallest beads in the dangle state that they are going to be in. So now I'm going to go into the middle size bead. So I'm going to take another pin. I'm going to get one crystal 11 O seed bead. Now I'm going to take the smaller bead caps and I'm going to put one on here open side up and then the smaller compared to the largest one. So this is more the middle seed bead. And then I'm going to put a bead cap the smaller bead cap open side down, and then another crystal. So this is the order for the middle dangle. And I create the loop in the same way. So I'm just a little bit above that first seed bead, so it gives you, it gives you uh, space to bend it, okay? 
So then you do just that, so it looks like this, and then you're gonna bend it back over with your fingers. And you have the beginning of a good loop, and then you're going to go up into the loop, cut it, and take your round nose pliers and close that loop. Just like this. Now, for me, I don't like it when um, bead caps are loose like that. So I'm going to manipulate it a little bit more. That way, it's a little bit more snug. So I just bend it back and bend it down a little bit more. And that way, it still moves, but not near as much. All right, you can manipulate it until you get it exactly the way you want it. And there we go. That is the first middle size dangle. So then we get the pin and you create another one. And once I do that, I'll come back. All right, so now we have the two middle pieces. Now we're gonna create the big one that kind of hangs at the bottom. So for this one, I'm not gonna put any crystal seed beads on it. I'm just going to put the bigger bead cap at the bottom, open up, and then the big bead, or the big bead, and then the other big bead cap open down, like this. So then when you bring it up and down like this, it closes in on it just like that. So now let me create that last loop for this one, bend it and then bend it back with my fingers. All right, got the start of a loop there. Then I'm going to go in there with my cutters, hang on to the end of it, and cut it. Okay, and once again, I don't like it when bead caps are loose, so I'm going to manipulate it in such a way that makes the bead cap nice and snug. So I'm gonna bend it around, and Try to get that in to go into the top of the bead cap just like that so that when you have your loop the bead caps don't move or they just barely move that is too much movement for me so you straighten that up and then tighten it up so i'm just twisting it around there we go. So there is the big bead at the end. All right, so there are all the pieces for one earring, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for the other beads. So if you need um, to go back and look, how we, look at how we created these over here, uh, you can do that. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side and I'll come back when all of them are made. So here we are back. Um, we have all of our dangle pieces uh, put together. So now the next step is to add the piece of chain to each piece. So that's what all these little uh, four millimeter jump rings are for. So I Pick them up one at a time, and these, we're gonna start with the smallest. So you're gonna take the jump ring, add it to the, um, add the dangle to it, and then the smallest piece of chain, and 
add it to it just like that. Take your other pair of chain nose pliers and close the jump ring. So there's that, and I'm gonna do that same thing to the other two, the same size. So there are my three smallest dangles, and I have three of the smallest pieces of chain. So now I'm gonna take the same size jump ring, and with the middle size bead, I'm going to use the middle size piece of chain. So I'm gonna take that jump ring, and I'm going to add it to that middle dangle. I'm going to take one of the middle size pieces of chain and add it to that last link. Try to get that in frame. There you go. and then close the jump ring. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other middle one. So there are the two middle pieces. Now we're going to do the same thing with the large piece, except we're going to go with the large piece of chain. So I have the same size four millimeter jump ring going to add the large dangle to it, just like that. Make it clear. And then I'm going to add the longest piece of chain. When chain gets this small, it can definitely be hard to work with, but definitely not impossible and then close that jump ring. All right, so there is one set. And you're gonna do the exact same thing over on this set, and once I get mine done, I will be back to join you. So here we go. We've got all of the pieces connected, and we are now going to attach them all to the jump ring and attach them to the ear wire. So here we go. We start with the jump ring and open it and we're now going to attach each piece. Start with the larger one Sometimes again, this chain is tiny to work with. So add this the second middle size bead. One thing I will say, I find that it's important to at least hang them in the correct order of size. Um, if you kind of attach them randomly, um, the earring doesn't hang right. Now, of course, that's a matter of preference, uh, but that's what I have found. So I like to put them on the jump ring in order of size. So now we're on to the three smallest ones. All right, and we have the last small one now. All right, so we have all the pieces hanging from it. And now before we close that jump ring, we are going to add the ear wire right onto the jump ring. And that way you don't have to worry about opening up the end of the ear wire. 
and we're going to close that jump ring. All right. So there you have it. There is the finished earring. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other pair. And I'll meet you back. So here is the matching pair. I've got them all uh, set up with the jump ring. Again, do them the exact same way. So I'm going to go get it set up um, on my display. And I'll be right back. All right. So here we go. There is the new pair with the other pairs that I've already made. And I just love the way that it came out. I, I love this style of earring. And like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, um, there are a lot of pieces <laughs> um, that, that go into this pair, but when it's all put together, it, it just, it looks so nice. And there's the new pair the tan color and it's the rondelle and of course the white pair is the round glass pearl and the blue one I have is also rondelle and this one is a mixture where you have the rondelle at the bottom and the round pearl at the top and there you go if you like this video and you want to see other videos like it, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Give me a like, leave a comment, tell me what you thought and uh, what you'd like to see. I love reading the comments and um, love hearing what you guys think. So I appreciate you watching this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.